ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஃபார் த லாஸ்ட் ஃபியூ டேஸ் எஸ் யூர் ரைட் ஃபார் த லாஸ்ட் ஃபியூ டேஸ் வி ஆர் சீங் அபவுட் தி வேரியஸ் லாஜிக் கண்ட்ரோலர்ஸ் லைக் தி இஃப் கண்ட்ரோலர் தி வைல்ட் கண்ட்ரோலர் தி லூப் கண்ட்ரோலர் சிம்பிள் அண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் கண்ட்ரோலர்ஸ் இன்டர்லீவ் ரேண்டம் random order and once only controller so what is special today what are we going to see today so today we are going to see about the another interesting controller which is a switch controller so what is the difference between a switch controller and what exactly is a switch controller and how does a switch controller works we'll see them in detail we'll see a how a switch controller works and what is the difference between a switch controller and other controllers and how to add a switch controller and more details are coming in the video so before we move to the video this is me vasant shanmugam i request you to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet please do share the videos with your friends comment your questions and your feedbacks in the comment section So first let's see what is a switch controller. So a switch controller is like an interleave controller in that it runs one of the subordinate elements on each iteration but rather than run them in sequence. The controller runs the elements defined by the switch value in the switch controller. So let's now see here how to add a switch controller here. So let's now see how to add a switch controller in a script. So before that we need to add a thread group. So let me add a thread group. And then we'll add a logic controller. So today we are going we are seeing about the switch controller. So let me add a switch controller here. And let's add few http requests. So since this switch controller works in a manner where it switches between various requests, let's add few more requests. So let me duplicate the request which we have here so let let us duplicate it to few more requests so we have five and we'll have six requests here so that we can play with the multiple requests and then to finally see how these requests work we'll add a listener which is the view results tree and also we'll add a summary report so so far we have added a thread group and under the thread group we have the switch controller and multiple requests under the switch controller and then a view results tree to see the execution of the script and then the summary report which tells us the number of requests that has been executed so here we have the setup ready so we have a switch controller and we have six requests under this switch controller and we have a think time so let let me disable it for now because for the switch controller we might not need a think time and we have a view results tree and a summary report and under the switch controller we will execute the test without any value and let's see how does it work so in many cases we will forget to add any value in most of the cases so let's see how does it work in that case and here we have the thread group we have one user with one loop count and let's see how does this work so i'm executing the test here and i have only one request that i have got hit and that too is a first request which is the zeroth request so the switch controller starts from 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so to check that let us keep the value to 0 and let's see what is executing so initially without any value in the switch value we have got the first request which is the zeroth request according to switch controller and now i have kept the value to 0 and let's see what is getting executed so i'm executing the test now so we could see here for the number 0 the zeroth request we have got the first request that has got executed and let's now keep it to 1 and see what request is getting executed so when we keep 
the switch controller as 1 it has taken the second request which is the 0 1 so the second request has got executed when I keep the number as 1 when I keep the switch value as 1 so in most of the cases this is how it works so it starts from number 1 2 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so here we have got six requests, which is from zero to five. What in case if we want to execute a test or if we want to execute a request, which is a 10th request, since we don't have the 10 requests here. And let's see how does the switch controller works when the value is out of range. And let's see how does it work or what is the request that is getting executed. So I have cleared all the requests and I'm running the test with the 10th request. And here we could see it has executed the first request, which is the zeroth request. So this proves us that if the switch value is out of range, the switch controller will run the zeroth element, which acts as the default for the numeric case. And this is also same when the value is empty. So for the value empty and for the value which is out of range, it executes the zeroth request, which is the first request that it have in the switch controller. So what if, if we use any non-numeric value, say for example, if we are running it as A, let's see what happens if we are running a script with a value, with a switch value as A in the, in the switch controller and let's see what happens. So I'm running the test now. So here we could not, we could not see any value that has been executed. But let's do one thing. So let me change this value to let's let's let me change the value to A. So I'm changing this particular first switch controller requests. So the first HTTP request I'm changing it as A. And let's see what happens, whether it executes or not. So let me run the test. So in the switch controller, I have kept the value as the switch value as A. And the first request name has changed to A. And let's see what happens. Yes, so here we can see if the value is non-numeric, then the switch controller looks for the element with the same name. Say for example, so let me change this name to, to a symbol, which is the percentage symbol, which is a non-numeric character. And here I'm change, keeping the same value here. And let's see what happens, whether it is getting executed. So yes, so it's hence it's proved that it first checks for the number of requests and in case if the value is a non-numeric then in that case it checks for the name of the request and if it matches then automatically it is getting executed so let's now see whether it works for the numeric one so now this is the third case so let me keep it as three and let's see how does it work whether it executes the same yes so it executes the same request which we have under the switch value so this is how it works so we have a lot of options we can take the value from a csv file here or even we can take a value or we can extract a value from from the response and we can even bring it here and we can execute the test so there are a lot of options that we have with switch controller so let's now make a few changes so let's increase the thread group to two and let's execute the test and see how does it execute so we have the switch controller the switch value is three and we have two users and let's execute the test so here we could see for the two users it has got executed one time so which means we have got two requests so in the summary report we can see this particular request has executed twice and we have got this request so let's now make another change so we'll increase the loop count to three and let's see how does the test work so here we could see the same request has got executed three times three times for the two users so we have got totally six requests so this is how it works so let's now see a difference between the switch controller and the interleave controller so let me make a duplicate of the switch controller and let me change it to interleaf controller so to do that i'm right clicking on the switch controller and then i'm changing the controller to interleaf controller 
So here we have got a switch controller and an interleave controller. And let's run the test with the same setup. So let me let me let us keep it to one user and one iteration. And let's see how does it work. So in the switch controller we have got the value as three. And in the interleave controller, we have no any other setup, we have no any other settings. And let's see how does this work. So we have got one user with one iteration with the two controllers. One is the switch controller and the other one is interleave controller. And we have got six requests each. So let's see what happens. So here we could see the switch controller works on the switch value and the interleave controller works on the top to bottom approach. So that's the reason we could see it has executed the first request. So let's now increase it to six iterations and let's see what happens. So here we could see the switch controller executes the same request six times, but the interleave controller executes all the requests, which is all the six requests. It started from A and then switch controller two switch controller request 3, switch controller request 5 and six switch controller request 6. So that is the difference between the switch controller and the interleave controller. So let's now change it to another controller and see what is the difference. So let's change the controller to the once only controller. So we all know how does this once only controller works, but still let's see how does it work. So we have got one user and six iterations. And let's see how does this work. Let, let me execute it. So here we could see the switch controller has first executed its request, which is the percentage symbol, which is the third value. Then it has moved to the once only controller, which has executed all its requests. And then it again went back to the switch controller. And since it is a once only controller, it has executed once only. So let's now change it to another controller. So let's now change the logic controller from interleave once only to random controller. And let's see how does this work. And we don't have any settings in the random controller. So let and we have one thread with six iterations. Let's see how does this work. So here we could see it started first with a third value, which is the percentage symbol request. And then under, under the random controller, it randomly picked a request, which is the sixth request. And then it has picked the A and again, six, three, three, six. But for the switch controller, it is every time the same request. So this is the difference between the switch controller and the random controller. So the random controller executes the same request, but the switch controller, I mean the random controller executes random requests under its request, but the switch controller requests the same value every time. So let us change it to random order and see how does this execute. Let me clear this. So here we could see multiple iterations has got executed. So for one user we have got let me clear it and let's execute one more time to see how does it work so this switch controller has got executed 12 times and the other request has got executed six times which, which is under the random order controller but they have got executed in a random fashion so that is the reason we could see different requests has got executed in a random fashion then let's change this controller to another controller and let's see how does it work. So let's change it to the throughput controller with total executions of two. And let's see how does this setup work. So here we could see the switch controller has got executed for eight times, which is the percentage request has got executed eight times. And the all other requests, since they have got only two iterations, so, so they have got only, they are supposed to execute only twice. So even though we are having six iterations to be done, 
but still the throughput controller want to execute only twice so all the requests have got executed only twice during this test execution so that is again the difference between the switch controller and the throughput controller so now let's make another change so we'll have two switch controllers under the same thread group and here we'll change the value to six Six or so sixth request. So let me change it to five since six is out of range. And let's see how does this work. So we'll have we'll increase the user to three and we'll reduce the loop count to three. And let's see how does this test work. So every time it is the same request. So it is three users into three iterations. So totally it is nine times for each request. And the first switch controller have chosen the percentage request and the second switch controller have chosen the second request so in fact we can even make a lot of change here in fact we can add a counter here in fact we can add a counter let me just show you what we can do that so we have we have a counter here let's see what change we can make so we will change it to one and we'll increment the value to one and let's export the value to counter here and here let us see whether this setup works and let's see what happens when we were making some changes inside the switch controller and let's see whether it doesn't does really makes any changes and let me execute the test so here we could see there is some change that has happened with the request so let us confirm this so let us change it to s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 so they are switch controller request 5 and 6 Okay, so let us see what happens this time. And even we can set the maximum value to five, which is the last value. Let's execute and see how does it really work, whether it did really work. So here we could see under the switch controller, we have got the S2, which is the number one, and then S3, which is the number two, S5, S6, S3, S4. So with by using this counter we were able to increase the value and we were able to bring in some change so this is how we can actually make use of the switch controllers it, it does not only work with whatever value we give in fact we can add various various uh, config elements under this in fact we can even extract the value from a csv dataset config which is which means like a, a parameter file we can extract the value and we can run it we can even change the value so there are like lot and lots of examples we can see those examples in our, in our later sessions but for now i think we have seen what is a switch controller how to add a switch controller and what is the differences between the switch controller and the various other controllers and also we have even added a counter and see how does this counter made a change while executing the switch controller so i believe this video would have been very very useful to you please do subscribe to our channel for more interesting and information videos till until we meet you in our next video it's bye bye from vasan shanmugam and little slaw